Hi everyone, this is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. We're located in Denver at I-25 in Hamden. And I'm going to teach you how to make a beautiful painting called River Reflections. Here we go, this is River Reflections. All right, so here's my sample painting. I have a water jar, water jar, small, medium, and large brushes. I have acrylic paints. I have red, white, yellow, blue, and black. These are your magic five colors. You can create any paint color under the sun with just these five colors. So in our painting kits for our Zoom classes, this is what we use. We uh, give our participants these in their kits and uh, we can mix any colors we want with this. That's exactly what we're gonna do right now. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, oh, before I, I start, I do wanna tell you that uh, you're welcome to start and stop this video at any point. That's the beauty of doing a recording. So I'm gonna go much more quickly than you are, probably because I've painted this painting before. So just stop and start it and then you can catch up with me, okay? All right, sounds good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna moisten my canvas with water. Denver's a dry place. It's, the air is dry here and acrylic paints dry very quickly. So this is just a spritzer, a water bottle for sp spritzing. You can also dip your brush in water and you can apply it like this. So I'm just applying water to the whole canvas. There was water up in that spritzer container. So you can just pick it up with your brush and apply it like that as well. So that just prepares my canvas for the paint. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here in this corner where it's pink. And there's a couple different ways I could do that. I'm using my big brush. I'm going, you can go between the two colors and you can mix your white with your red and that'll make pink. That's one way of doing it, no problem. Another way of doing it is you can put white on one side of your brush and red on the other. And if you do that, then you can put your colors on that way as well. So I'm gonna start up here where it's pink in my painting. Now that's a little pinkier pink. This particular uh, painting, I know they use fluorescent pink. We're gonna use a regular pink because we're sticking to our five colors. You can see down here, it's very pink. All right, not only am I coloring my uh, upper left corner and my upper, pardon me, in my lower left corner. I'm also doing the sides and the top where those pink colors are. And the reason for that is that that creates a gallery wrap. It's called a gallery wrap. And what that means is that when I hang this on the wall, I won't need a frame if there's paint there. So the reason I'm doing my upper left corner and my upper right corner, sorry, my upper left corner and my lower left corner is I'm making a painting that is about reflections. So there's a sky and there's water. And so whatever is happening in the sky is gonna be more or less reflected in the water. Not exactly, we're not gonna worry about anything being exact. This is a very loose, forgiving, painting. So as long as I've got some colors up in there somewhere that I'm happy with, and there's a little bit of it down here too. Awesome. And notice how sloppy and messy I'm being. When I'm painting a sky with a sunset, I want to be sloppy and messy because in five minutes, these clouds are going to move and the painting's going to look totally different. That's how you make a, a sky that's realistic is you keep it sloppy and messy because when you look out at a pretty sunset that's really what they look like is sloppy and messy okay good so i've got pink reflecting down here too and i'm going to clean my brush i always clean my brush in my water jar i swish it around until it's 
pretty clean, and then I dab it on napkins. There you go. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my yellow and white. So I have white on one side, I have yellow on the other. And so now I'm gonna come down here where I see some yellow in my painting. And I'm going to scribble on. These aren't any particular kinds of strokes. They're just scribbles. I'm gonna scribble on some color and I'm gonna do the same thing down here. This time above, this is below, this is above because it's a reflection. And I'm just gonna put some on. Am I being careful to make it a mirror image? Absolutely not. And why would I not be careful? Because water moves. And when water moves, the colors and the reflections kind of ripple and move with it. And so I don't want anything to look too fussy and be too exact. Where I overlapped that yellow and that pink, it's become this pretty peach. So I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna bring my camera in just a little bit so you can see this pretty peach. Let me adjust my a little bit for you too. I'm painting in the evening, so there's some shadows, and that's okay. I'm gonna just try to work with that. Uh, I'll work with that a bit. Sometimes I can adjust my lighting and improve upon the shadow situation a little bit. All right. There we go. Hopefully you can see a little bit better there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to overlap this area because I want a little more peach up here. My brush was starting to dry because acrylic paint dries so quickly, especially in dry climates. It's starting to dry, so where it's drying, it's creating a really lovely peachy yellow. And I'm liking that, so I'm, I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to be very messy about where I'm dabbing this peachy yellow. And I'm not really caring too much about my brush strokes. I could do crisscross like figure eights or, or uh, X's, I could do figure eights or I could just do dabs. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Just, just feel the paint, have fun with it. I'm gonna adjust my light one more time. Maybe that's better, okay. All right, so I've got pink, I've got yellow, I've got pink, I've got yellow, and where they overlap, it's peachy, so that's nice. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I, oh, I'm gonna put some more peach up here too. I see in this one, there's some of that peach. And again, the way I get peach is I take the red and white, I put some in there, make some pink, slosh it around a bit, and then overlap with a little yellow where I want it to be peachy. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna need to bring some down here. And then I, I can pick up a little yellow on one side, a little white on the other, and then I can come back in here and overlap where I want it to be peachy. If I do dabs, it's gonna look dabby, which is fine. Okay. All right, so this is messy. Granted, it's messy, that's fine. Make sure you pick it up and you do your tops and your sides as well. Okay, this is a much brighter color. Uh, painting so far than the original. The artist who did this has a much more, has a much softer color palette and I'm a bolder painter. So not like Boulder, Colorado, although that's not far from here, uh, but I use bolder colors. Every artist has their own style. So don't worry if yours is bolder or softer than someone else's. That just means that's your style. And your style is there to embrace and to learn about and to fall in love with because it's you. Don't fight it. Learn who you are as an artist. Learn who, who you are as a painter. Embrace it, go with it, and honor it. Because everyone's an artist 
and your inner artist is just waiting to come out. Get to know your inner artist and respect him or her. Have fun with him and her or her. Okay, so I've got all these interesting blends and shapes and colors going on. Nice. I'm gonna wash my brush again. Wish I could get this light exactly perfect. On the video, it doesn't look very bright, but in person, it looks very bright. Okay. So now I'm going to introduce blue and white. And I'm gonna do it the same way I did it before. I've got blue on one side, I've got white on the other. White, blue. And just now my cord came out. So let me go ahead and put that on and then I'll put the cord back in. All right. I painted this painting earlier this week and I forgot to hit record on my Zoom. So this is the second time I'm painting it this week and I enjoy this painting, so it's a good thing that I enjoy it. And every time I paint it, it turns out different. And that's good, that's good. You want, you want to reflect the way you're feeling now you want to reflect who you are today that you weren't the other day when you painted. Every time you paint, your painting's gonna turn out different because you've changed. Bob Ross used to paint his paintings several times before he was on air to paint the original or uh, the uh, one that he painted on the show. He would first paint one for his producer and then he would paint one as a practice just before the show. And then he would paint one on the show. And I learned this because I'm a Bob Ross, certified Bob Ross instructor. This is not a Bob Ross painting, obviously, but I am a Bob Ross instructor. And so I do teach those as well at Sipping and Painting Hamden. And I'll have some of those classes coming up. Those are oil painting classes. We'll do those soon. But in the meantime, in the meantime, Just know that every time you paint something, it'll turn out different, and that's okay. Embrace it. Embrace it. Feel, feel what you're feeling and know that it's never going to be the same twice. And you're probably thinking, oh, I've never seen a sky quite like that before. And that's okay because it's all going to make sense when we pull it together with the silhouettes of our land and sky land and trees and other foliage. It's all gonna come together. Now one little trick for blending is if you want things to blend a little bit more, all you have to do is put a little water on your brush, dab it off, but so your brush is moist but not wet, not drippy. And then you can use that moist brush to work in the areas where two colors overlap. So where this yellow touch the blue, if I just go back and forth with crisscross strokes, I can blend in those two colors. And you don't really know where the yellow started and where it stopped and where the blue starts and stops. And somewhere in there, it makes a pretty green. I can do the same thing down here where my colors don't seem very blended. Put a little bit of water on my brush, dab it off, and I can work quickly with my water to try to wake that paint up and make it blend a little bit softer. When you overlap colors like that, they blend and soften. They blend and soften. So you can make this painting bright and bold, or you can make it soft and pastel but that's your decision. It's your world. You paint it the way you want to paint it. All right. Now in this one, there's a little sunset here. It's mostly yellow, but it's got some pink in it to make peach. And then it definitely has some pink over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with my yellow. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, just like I did before. And then I'm going to put in some 
sunsetty color over here. Sunsetty color, that's a technical term, obviously. Now my horizon lines can be somewhere around here. I never put my horizon line right in the middle and I'll tell you why. When you put your horizon line in the middle and you divide your painting in half that way, your eye doesn't know where to look. So if you put your horizon line a little below the middle or a little above the middle, then your eyes will gravitate toward the larger section. Usually the larger section is the one that grabs you. Here's where I'm mixing in some pink and hopefully this is gonna become peach here in a second. Hopefully. So I'm making my horizon a little more peachy, peachy pink. And I can just play around with the colors and the shapes in there and not worry about a thing. Not worry about a thing. Oh, these are fun, bright colors. That must be in a bright mood today. What kind of mood are you in today? What, what is yours looking like? We do Zoom classes here frequently now, now that we've all learned how because of the post-pandemic need to learn how to do Zoom. And so we're doing quite a bit of Zoom classes here lately. And that's pretty exciting for me as a painter because I get to learn something new. All right, that's getting awfully, awfully thick with paint. And clean off my brush, let it dry a bit. I might go over that with a little water. All right, now down here, this is mostly covered by the land. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some color in that anyway. Uh, actually, before I do, I'm gonna put in some more pink because I see some pink in here. And that's pretty. So. I'm gonna put some pink in here. This painting has no rhyme or reason to it, and that's why I love it so much. Every time I paint it, it looks totally and completely different than the last time, and that's enjoyable. I enjoy that very much. All right, so I've got some pink in different splotches and kind of reflections, kind of sort of. Um, and let's see. All right, boy, my painting doesn't look a lot like the other one, but you know what? That's okay. Like I said, uh, oh, so I was starting to tell you that I uh, teach some Bob Ross class. I learned from some of his, his friends down in Florida, his studio, that when Bob painted, he painted three different copies of the same composition. And if you put them side to side, even they don't look alike because you change. Every time you paint, you change a little. And painting reflects your personality and depending on how you're feeling that day, if you got some sleep, if you got some exercise, if you um, maybe had a phone call with your boss that went well or didn't go well. Maybe you're thinking about a problem you're trying to work out in your head. Whatever it is, every time you paint, something else is going on. And so your paintings start to reflect that. Bob Ross used to say, don't be angry when you paint or you'll get an angry little painting. But I found something else that he said to be true and that is every day is a good day for painting because when you do paint, you start to relax and that's a great thing. Painting is a wonderful stress reliever. Wonderful stress reliever. I started painting when I was 50 and I'm 57 now. Giving, giving that away. Um, but you can start painting at any age. I had a, a guy in here one time, it was the sweetest thing. It was a, a family that came in, they hired me to teach a class to their family on Christmas Eve. And they told me that their grandfather, I think he was 84 at the time, had on his bucket list that he wanted to learn to paint like Bob Ross. And so for Christmas, they brought him in surprised him, of course, and they had a painting class for their whole family, and oh, he was happy, but he came in, and he was the fun, so the funniest thing to me, 
He said, I have never painted before. The only thing I ever painted was the broadside of a barn. And sure enough, we painted a Bob Ross landscape and there was a barn in there. And first he didn't want to paint because he was scared. But man, he, he created the most beautiful painting. I will never forget that man. I will never forget that class. It was glorious and wonderful. So I've got all of these colors on here. My painting looks different than this one, but that's okay. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just let it dry a bit. Acrylic paint takes about 10 minutes to dry in Denver. It may take longer in Seattle, maybe shorter in Tucson, just depends on where you are. But in Denver, it takes about five to 10 minutes to, to uh, set so you can paint over it. Um, and probably after about 10 minutes, it's gonna dry unless you really globbed it on. Uh, there's a technique, um, impasto, which is uh, where you paint with a knife. That's really fun. I love painting with a knife. But there you have very, very thick paint. And that takes longer, obviously. When you pile it on, it takes longer. Van Gogh used to paint like that. He, he had very thick paint. This is thinner, it's smoother. So it's gonna not take so long. And I'm gonna show you how you know if your paint is wet or dry. If you look closely, you might be able to see shiny parts. If you see anything that's shiny, it's wet. It's like the sidewalk, if it's shiny, it's wet. So if you see any glistening, you can see some there, any shininess, then you know your painting is still wet. Now here we have hair dryers. We have a hair dryer in the closet. We also have a fan and both of those work to dry your painting. But this is my favorite way. I just pick it up and do this. And I might put on some music, I might dance around. When we're teaching our classes in the studio here, our in-studio classes, we play music, popular music, and we dance around. We have a silly old time. Everyone's drinking a glass of wine while they paint. It's very silly, very fun. But I can't do that on YouTube because uh, there are copyright violations if I play a song somebody owns. So uh, we're not playing any music tonight, but you can play music while you paint. That helps you relax. There was a study actually that showed, it said that uh, there are a number of different ways that you can open your creative mind. One of them, of course, is alcohol. Don't overdo it. Uh, if you have an alcohol problem, don't, don't do that one. But for uh, many people, a glass of wine will help you relax enough to feel confident enough to start painting. Um, besides that movement, so we encourage our students to move around the room and take frequent breaks. Go visit a neighbor or uh, get up and get something from the bar, go get a snack, walk around, look at other people's paintings because movement is something that opens up your creative mind, the part of your brain that is creative. So alcohol, movement. The other thing is singing, okay? Oh, two things. One is music and the other is singing. So if you play music, you start to relax and relaxation opens up your creative mind. But then on top of that, even more powerful is singing. So at home, what I like to do is I get a, a beverage, in this case water, uh, but it could be wine. Uh, get, turn on your music, put something singable on, start singing and move. Stand up when you paint, move, move around. Dry off your canvas like this. Dance around the room. And by then you will have opened up the part of your brain that's more creative. So try those techniques, okay? All right, so now I've got this, this lovely messy painting that I, I'm enjoying. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my silhouettes, okay? So the way I do that is I'm gonna take my small brush I'm gonna dip it in my black paint and I'm gonna swirl it as I pull it backward. Swirl and pull, swirl and pull, swirl and pull. And that is sharpening it, it's chiseling my brush, okay? And I'm gonna to start to draw with that brush. So I'm gonna make my horizon line. Now this doesn't have to be straight at all. 
because there's just a little bit of a line there. I'm going to pull my horizon line through that peach. Okay? Doesn't have to be straight. No straight lines in nature, so don't worry too much, okay? Don't worry at all. All right, above the line, I'm going to put in a landmass. Now be messy and don't worry about the shape. Just make some hills and valleys and don't worry. Okay, and then below the landmass, I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. This is gonna change in shape, so don't worry about a thing. It doesn't have to be a perfect reflection or anything. But if this, you can see how this one's far from a straight on reflection. No worries. In fact, this one, I'm looking at it, this one tends to go down like this. You can do that. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. But what does matter is this part. I want to make it so that my river starts here. There's an inlet here. Okay. So in order to do that, I need to put a dot about an inch, inch and a half. Mm, actually, I can start it about, let's say an inch and a half to the left of that, on that horizon line. If, if your landmass, let, let's make your landmass come down a little bit. I'm gonna put a, a dot, about an inch and a half to two inches to the left of that horizon line, okay? All right, now the reason I did that is because I wanna make this inlet this way, diagonal. So now I'm gonna go up from there and then I'm going to, Here's the important part. I'm going to angle down from here, okay? Because I want that inlet. I want that beginning of the river, okay? So we're going to fill all this in in a second, but I just wanted you to leave that opening. So there's a diagonal here, there's a diagonal here. The messier, the better, okay? We don't want straight lines because straight lines don't look like nature, okay? So I'm gonna pull this way down here and then I'm gonna, so this land mass is huge, okay? You can just make it that way. All right, and this one is sticking out this way. All right, now I'm gonna take my medium brush that's a little bit bigger, this one. I'm gonna dip it in my black paint now, if you didn't have a small, medium, and large brush just like I did, just improvise. Do use whatever you have. But basically, I just want, I outlined the shape, and then I'm filling it in with a slightly larger brush because it makes it go a little faster. But when I get to those edges, I'm being careful not to go over the lines because I don't want any fuzzy marks. So, I'm going up to the outline and then I'm just filling in and don't forget to fill in on the side too. So that's gallery wrap just wraps right around. Okay. Now my land doesn't match theirs hardly at all, but it doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because no one's ever going to see that original. So the fact that mine has more land over here makes Absolutely zero difference, zero, because no one's ever gonna see that original. They're just gonna see mine and go, ooh, that's pretty, I hope. All right, and they're not gonna see yours either. They're not gonna see the original on yours either. Make sure you fill in those edges from the bottom that corresponds with your land. Okay, nice. Now, over here, I'm gonna do the same thing, fill in this. I'm gonna go right up to the edge. When I get to the edge, I'm gonna go slow and carefully so I don't get any fuzzy brush ends. I have to re-outline it. All right, so that's pretty quick. And if, you, if your black looks a little sloppy, that's okay. Land, land looks like that, it looks like that. All right, now this one curves down in front a little bit. So I'm gonna pick it up. I'm going to bring it down to the side and I'm just going to curve it around a little bit. 
give it a little bit of contour in that river. Not too much, but now it kind of pools out into this. All right, great. All right, so we've got some land, we've got a river, and we've got a pretty sky. And I'm gonna keep on going, put my brush in the water. All right, you guys wanna learn some happy trees? All right, let's, let's paint some happy trees. Let's do it. Okay, so let me tell you about trees. I wanna show you this, okay? So, here's some tips about how to paint a tree. Trees are always wider at the bottom, and, and as they go up, they get thinner. They're wider here at the base. That's so they don't fall over. Bob Ross used to call that foots. He said trees need foots. All right, so they get thinner as they go up, and the way you accomplish that easily with your brush is that you push hard at the bottom, you push hard, push hard, and then you loosen up as you go with your pressure. You loosen up and then the, the brush starts to run out of paint as you go up higher and then it just naturally gets thinner and thinner. Notice I didn't make that line straight. There are no straight lines in nature, so you wanna keep your tree trunks curvy, a little twisted, a little bent, and then another one's gonna go right here next to it because every tree needs a friend. Didn't Bob say that? He did. Uh, I, again, this is not a Bob Ross class, but he is, he, I didn't know him, but he was a mentor to me and to every artist, everyone who ever painted, probably. He, he was an inspiration. And, when you come up through the trunk, you can twist your brush and pull up and you get a nice branch. Again, don't make those branches straight. Just twist and pull up. Go right out of the trunk, out of the trunk, twist and pull up. And when you twist, you get curves. And that's what you want. You want curves because curves are more natural than not curves. So twist and pull up. Now I don't, some, some artists subscribe to the idea of making a Y, and I have a problem with that, and I'll tell you why. Most species of trees, when they're growing, they don't grow two branches out of the side. This is my own observation. In exactly the same point, the trunk grows up, one branch comes out. It grows a little more, another branch grows up, comes out grows a little more, another branch comes out. So to look more natural, you want to pull those branches out from different parts of the trunk, different parts, not just in a Y. Now, are there trees that they grow out exactly at the same place in a Y? Oh, probably. You know, trees are different everywhere, all over the country. They're, they're different. So don't quote me. Who knows? There's probably a botanists out there are saying, oh no, the Madagascar tree from, uh. but anyway, usually they, they, the branches come out in different places. Okay, so those are loose branches. Now, I need to make reflections down here. Oh, that's going to be harder. Nah, it won't be hard. All you do, you pull down, you go above, you look at where that tree is, and you pull down, remember, now it's reversed. More pressure at the bottom, and then coming up. But I don't have a very deep pond here, so I don't have to worry about pulling out too many branches because the reflections are long. Our, our, the trees are tall, and these reflections are not. So that's easy. If I had a wider pond, I'd have to worry, not worry, but I have to be a little more careful with where those trunks and branches came out. Now remember, always start in the trunk at the base and pull down, pull down. And am I being really careful that, to make sure that it's a mirror image? Absolutely not. Oh, goodness. Nobody's going to look at your painting that close. Most people come in your house, they glance at something, they don't dissect it, and they think, oh, that's lovely. Who did that? No one's going to be putting their nose in your painting. And if they are, hmm, 
That would be interesting. All right. So again, if you want to make some finer lines, you can just chisel on the side of your plate. Twist your brush back and forth. Twist, twist. Grab some paint, pull it, twist it, pull it, twist it, pull it, twist it. And that chisels your brush a little bit more. It takes a while. Pull it, twist it, pull it, twist it, pull it, twist it. And it, and it will make slightly finer lines. Uh, let me show you an example. So, yeah, let me just do that. It'll make slightly finer lines. Now, if you want, you can pull other branches off. But do it with a light touch because you want these to be thin, right? I have to do it up there too, thin. Okay, so in order to pull off some branches, go through the trunk, through the branch, and then out to the twigs. Through the trunk, through the branch, out to the twigs. And through the trunk, through the branch, out to the twig. Through the trunk and the branch and out to the twig. If you do that, it keeps making your trunk wider, which is natural, as opposed to making the tips of your branches wider. So I've seen people go in from the sky and pull down. And if you did that, you probably quickly learned that if you do that, then the end of your branches will be the fattest part. And then it looks like a cactus. And if you do that, no problem. Just call it a happy accident and say you're making a scene of cactuses. No one will ever know the difference, right? It's your painting and your world. And you decide if it's a tree or a cactus or hmm, whatever else. I, uh, I used to, I loved, I used to be a preschool teacher, so I loved Dr. Seuss. And I remember thinking, oh, his trees are so fanciful. How did he ever come up with those ideas? And then I went to La Jolla, California. And oh, believe it or not, there are trees in La Jolla, California that look something like the Dr. Seuss trees. And holy cow, I couldn't even believe it. I could not believe these, that he didn't just make those up. There are some odd funky looking trees around there. And that was, that was awesome, made the whole trip. All right, so now I'm gonna, there's a tree here too, and it reflects down here. So I'm going to take my biggest brush. This is a different country, a biggest brush. I'm gonna put black paint both sides of my brush, and I'm gonna come up here. Remember, press down real hard at the base, and then lighten your touch and twist. Yeah, there you go. Hard at the base, lighten your touch and twist. And that makes the trunk a little thinner, okay? And I don't need to put a reflection down here because there's already land. Now, I'm gonna dab that brush into my black paint again. And this tree kinda, I don't really know what this tree is. Maybe one of those funky California trees, I don't know. But I'm gonna turn mine a little bit into a pine tree. And I'm gonna do that by just tapping. Tap, 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 With just the tips of my brush. Not too neat. You don't want it to look like a ladder. Okay, go back and forth, but don't make a zigzag. You don't want it to be too obvious. And leave some spaces between the branches a little thicker, thicker spaces, and some branches a little longer, but mostly, Mostly, they're going to be going in the direction of wider at the base, thinner at the top. And be sure to get them on that gallery wrap side too. And just do that by popping. All right, so that kind of gives you the sense of a little pine tree. At least I hope it does. Let me see. Yeah, kind of. All right. And you can tap in any place that you want fullness. Near a trunk, pine trees are always thicker with foliage near the trunk because you have more foliage near the center because it's coming from all four directions. Out here, it's only coming from what's sticking out to the side, to the side. Where's my arm? To the side. But at the trunk, they're coming out from all four. So it's always gonna be a little thicker at the trunk. 
And pine trees also, their branches go right down to the bottom. If you see them in a city park, they trim the bottoms or Christmas tree, they trim the bottoms, but out in nature, they tend to go right to the bottom. And if I wanna do that reflection, then I can do a little reflection there of that tree's lower branches. Okay. All right, so I'm getting close to being done in my painting. And you can see now all those funny colors that didn't make sense in the sky and the water before, they're making sense now. All right, so what I need here, I'm gonna take a small brush again and I'll show you the next step. See these little things that stick up? I don't know what they are. Two ways of doing those. You could use a fan brush, uh, but we're, we're going with minimal stuff here. We're going with just small, medium, and large. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with a small brush. I'm going to, once again, load my small brush with paint, wiggle and pull through it. Yeah. Pull it backward as you wiggle it, back and forth. All right, I'm gonna do this funky, funky area here. I'm gonna start at one point. There's a point, I'm gonna pull up, and I'm gonna flick, flick from the same point. Flick it out, flick it out, okay? And then I could do another one next to it. I could flick taller, I could flick shorter. It doesn't really matter. If it's a little bit of canvas is showing through, load your paint again, okay? All right, and then next to it over here, there's a much bigger one. So big flicks, flick. Start in the center point, flick. Keep loading your brush, flick, flick. Flick. It's always starting in the same stem, same center point, and flicking out. That's how I am creating those whatever they are, branches or who knows what those are. And you can put a row of them or whatever you like, your painting. All right, but once I do that, it's missing in the reflections, okay? So I can be easier on the reflections, but I need to just know that wherever that center point was, I'm gonna flick down, and I'm gonna make a mirror image right from it. Now, some of it's gonna fall in the land, and some of it's gonna fall in the water. But I'm using this base as my guide, right? So that one is not gonna come down into the water. And if this land wasn't so big, this one would come down. Now here, in this painting, they do have a little bit of it showing through, but it could be because we don't really know where this foliage starts in that because they didn't use this center idea. They had a mound. So they had a mound like this in this painting. And I'm trying to use that painting as my inspiration. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to make it kind of similar. So if this is, a plant that let's say started way down here, right? With those flicks, then it might flick a little bit down into the water. So let's just put a few of those little flicks down. I don't know what, feel that? Ooh, whoa, happy accident, happy accident. That's all right, just go with it. Just go with it. You didn't mean to flick it that far down, but hey, that's okay. That's all right, I'm gonna go with it. All right, so a little bit of that from down below. We don't know what's going on here. We can't really see into that silhouette where all this foliage stuff is coming from, but that's okay. And you know what, if you don't like that, you can always bring the layer down a little lower, okay? So no worries, it's your world. All right, now what I like to do, I like to see my paintings from a distance before I declare if they're done. I saw some movie, um, last summer, I think it was called, had a creepy name, it was something about a woman on fire. It was a creepy name, creepy name. But it was a good movie. And one of the things they said in the movie was a woman asked her artist that was doing her portrait, how do you know when a painting is finished? And the artist said, when do you stop painting? And I found that to be true. I know my painting is finished when I stop painting. So I'm looking at these. They're not identical, they're not the same, but I'm pretty happy. It's okay for a day's work. 
well, about a half hour's work actually. So I'm feeling pretty happy. I hope you are too. And we'll do another one tomorrow. I'm gonna keep posting on YouTube and we're gonna just keep teaching you more and more classes. I do ask that if you enjoyed your class, if you learned anything at all, please like, like, down here, like, like, and subscribe to our channel. And then come back next time, have your red, white, black, yellow, and blue paint ready. And I'll teach you another painting, okay? Another acrylic painting. And then watch out also on our channel for Bob Ross classes. They're gonna be coming up. That's really exciting. Anyway, thanks for painting with me today. It was a joy and a pleasure. And I look forward to painting with you again. Take care.